Thanks for joining us for Together. I'm Karen Lee. This show celebrates all the wonderful things happening in Colorado. There's a lot of good going on from young kids who are helping each other out to seniors who continue to give back to their communities. This show proves you are never too young or too old to come together for Colorado. So grab the kids, sit back and enjoy. Getting outside and enjoying the great outdoors is what most people love about Colorado. But for people with limited mobility, going on a hike isn't always a possibility. Karen Morfitt takes us to one state park that is changing that. Pat Hart and his daughter Izzy enjoy taking in Colorado's beautiful scenery. We love to be outside. But it's rare they get the chance to hike really together. I wanted to have like a custom trailer built or something that I could pull behind me, but there's not much out there for that. Luckily, Pat doesn't have to worry about that anymore. It's just a wonderful experience to be able to see the joy. The state park determined to make sure every one of us, regardless of ability, can enjoy the great outdoors. That's next on Together. Well, we've told you about the McCaffrey family on this show before. The famous football family came to the aid of an injured hiker earlier this year. Now they're coming together for children with special needs. Michael Abeda explains how they created a field of dreams. No! They never thought they'd see their son with Down syndrome play football. No more sitting on the sidelines. They run right on the Today, these kids are taking the field for a chance to cheer and play football. And it's great to uh, get together and, and have something like that, you know, for the kids to be able to do. The camp is daring kids to do more than they thought possible. Coming up on Together. Well, that'll make you smile. Celebrations don't only have to be reserved for birthdays or for athletes who win a big game. There's a lot more to celebrate in life, like beating cancer, for example. Kelly Worthman introduces us to one woman who got her own victory celebration. Nina Rentschler got a devastating diagnosis in October. I was diagnosed with stage 2A breast cancer. After five months of treatment, she can now call herself a survivor. Now that I've gone through this, I feel like I can do anything. This week, Nina joined other survivors to celebrate overcoming cancer. <laughs> the people who came together to give them the party they deserved. It's just a huge achievement. That's later on Together. Well, there is another cancer survivor coming together for Colorado. Her name is Allison Wynn. While battling cancer at six years old, she decided to name her chemo the stink bug. And from that, a nonprofit was born. Eight years later, the stink bug project has given canine companions to nearly 100 children that are battling serious illnesses. Kathy Walsh and photojournalist Bob Burke introduce us to just one of the kids who have benefited. He's family. He's a beautiful black lab mix. A 103-pound gentle giant. Mogul, a.k.a. Mogi, is a rescue dog. He rescued the Fisher family. Truly, like, this dog has been life-changing. Especially for Jude. The six-year-old was born with Prader-Willi syndrome, a rare genetic disorder. Talking or walking or running um, are quite a challenge for Jude. And the syndrome causes an insatiable appetite. And the first thing on his mind was, I'm going to spell it, F-O-O-D, Jude now is very active. He walks the dog, sometimes in the house, <laughs> sometimes with two leashes. Jude got Mogi from the Stink Bug Project, a nonprofit that pairs sick children with companion dogs. Yeah. Today, Jude met the founder of Stink Bug. What do you like best about Mogi, Jude? He's doing a really good job. I like Mogi. Allison Wynn was nine and recovering from a brain tumor when she got Coco, a pup trained by inmates in a program at Colorado prisons. I just thought it would be fun to give dogs to other kids to make them feel better. In nine years, Stinkbug has matched nearly 100 kids and prisoner-trained canines. This is hard for me to believe. Allison is happy she's helped so many. She made a new friend today and met a Stinkbug family forever grateful for the big black dog they call a blessing. Beautiful. Thank you, Kathy. Colorado offers thousands of hiking trails and more than 40 state parks, but there's only one of them that gives visitors a new way to explore the outdoors for free. Karen Morfitt and photojournalist Jeremiah Belisle took a look, closer look at their mission to make sure that everyone, no matter their challenge, can access the great outdoors. 
time driving. Too. On Father's Day weekend, Pat Hart is right where he wants to be with his little girl, Izzy. Undiagnosed, non-mobile, non-verbal. She just likes, really likes being around people. The two spent their morning enjoying the Colorado trails. I've been looking for ways to get out and be able to hike with her. He found a way at Staunton State Park when he discovered the track chair program. And she's uh, really laid back, so she doesn't, all the bumping doesn't bother her quite as much. So and she's sleeping through most of it. Friends of Staunton State Park launched the program in memory of their own friend. The group's president, Wayne Parkinson, says after raising enough funds, they now have three chairs and operate almost every weekend. Last year, we had 150 people out on trail who otherwise would not have had the opportunity to do so. Volunteers make it all happen. I might start crying here. <laughs> I, I just love being able to work with people. Even at the end of his shift, Bob Coburn couldn't turn away from an unplanned trip. First, coaching the new user on how to operate the chair, <laughs> and then tagging along on the hike to make sure there are no issues. It's just a wonderful experience to be able to see the joy in these people, to be able to come out to a place like this. The only downside, at least for Izzy and her dad, the day coming to an end. Good job, kiddo. Well, we just love this story so much. We had to get Karen Morford to come in, talk to us a little bit more about it. Curious on how this idea got started. Where did it come from? Well, Karen, it's kind of a tragic story, actually. Um, friends of Staunton State Park had a local, knew, knew of a local man who really enjoyed the outdoors, that area now known as Staunton Park. And unfortunately, he was involved in a really uh, tragic accident, and he was left paralyzed from his neck down. And so he wanted to be outdoors, and he was able to get help from Craig Hospital access to one of these chairs and so he was able to get out back on the trails enjoy life kind of as he did before and um, when he passed away actually Mark Madsen that's his name there this is him he um, his friends wanted to keep this going and so they actually started this program and purchased two chairs with the help of all these donations they started raising funds and that's where we are at today they now have three chairs they only use two um, because they want to have a backup in case something were to happen they want to make sure that whoever signs up gets to make sure they yeah. get out there every day so it was out of something terrible came something beautiful really just great so let's talk about the chairs how do people sign up for this if they want to get out there and use them well so it's all reservation based you do have to sign up and they do two um, runs every day they um, two runs every weekend and so it's Saturday and Sunday only they don't do it during the week but you can sign up online you um, have to uh, sign up online it's a state park website and so you can get on there find the track chair program we'll have all that information online um, and you can just sign up and really it's anyone who wants to do it um, oh, but you do great. have to limit it to the summer months right of course because the weather yeah. <laughs> weather you permitting can't take right those always chairs out. <laughs> I mean you'd think you could take it out anytime but really it's right. um, limited to the summer yeah months, for so. sure you got to be careful well I know a lot of people even if they don't want to use one of these chairs but they love this story they want to get, get involved with it how do they support this program and there's so many ways that you can do that um, for them you know getting people to sign up is is not a problem they always have interest in oh, this great. program because Volunteers. so many people yeah uh, volunteer you can certainly sign up to help them if you want, but donations are a really big thing that they need right now. So they um, advise people to get online, find friends of stauntonstatepark.org okay. um, and donate. And then they also will have a uh, fundraiser barbecue this summer on August 11th. They're going to hold that in memory of Mark Madsen. Um, it's August 11th. It's at Staunton State Park mm -hmm. and everyone is welcome. Of course, all the proceeds, it's all donations. So they will go right back to this program and hopefully get them into another chair and get more people out there. And that's really what they want to do. They want to keep yeah, expanding. For sure. And to see those smiles, that was just beautiful. Oh, yeah, it was a wonderful story. Oh. And I was so honored to be a part of it. Yeah, well, thanks for sharing more on this and learning a little bit more about the backstory, which yeah. is always um, a story in itself. So, it really is. Karen, thanks for being with us. Thanks we appreciate so it. Well, a big thank you, of course, to the thousands of you who joined me to ride for those who can't. We rode to find a cure for multiple sclerosis. And those efforts certainly paid off. We have an update on how much money was raised during Bike MS. And even if you weren't there, you can still help researchers find a cure. I think that the ability to raise money to solve MS <laughs> is, uh, is paramount. It's one of the uh, crippling diseases that we all potentially face, and it's important to do that.
a great weekend we had for Bike MS. I was one of nearly 2,500 people who took part in the annual ride to Fort Collins, got involved with Bike MS years ago for one of my best friends, Andrea. Since then, I ride for the dozens more people in my life I've learned about that now have MS. They're fighting this. Together, we raised almost $2.7 million, and all of that money is going to go toward finding a cure for multiple sclerosis. And it's not too late to donate. If you would like to help out, you will find a link for how to do that at our website, cbsdenver.com. Beautiful weekend for that. Lauren Whitney joins me now, and a lot of people out there cycling couldn't help but do it because the weather was so great. We had that, we were sandwiched with a little nice break between the heat wave. And I can't believe that you raised $2.7 million. That is, that is incredible. incredible. Yeah. So congratulations to all of your efforts. It's really amazing what you do for all of that. Yeah, thank you, Lauren. I appreciate You're it. You're welcome. And it was a beautiful day, like you said. And here you are with some of your family and friends out there getting ready for the kickoff. And I love that you just look so happy out there. <laughs> I know. I think I'm the shortest one. <laughs> I wasn't kids. going to mention that you're, you know, <laughs> that you're right. the shrimp of the group that's there. Right. That's <laughs> all right. Yeah, that's our CBS4 team. So yeah. it was great to have some uh, some people join our team, which is awesome. And here's the Martinez family at Bike MS. You can see how excited they are to be out there as well. Yeah, and this couple, Lauren, they raised over $3,000 on their own. Oh, my goodness. They so did a fantastic job. These are some high-powered so. people uh, yeah, we're raising <laughs> lots of money. And this wasn't the only biking that went on uh, this week. We had our Bike to Work Day as well. So here's Elaine Torres with some of her friends uh, out and about uh, getting ready for the big bike to work day, which was on Wednesday. So that was a really hot day, though. So you guys, again, got really lucky with the uh, with the nice weather. We did get lucky. Mm -hmm. And the bike to work was awesome, too, right? Everyone really enjoyed it. And they had all those great stations and, and food stations. I think everyone enjoyed the food, too. Oh, yes. They had so many snacks and great uh, freebie giveaways. So everyone certainly enjoyed that as well. Yeah. Well, be sure to share your photos with us. We always like to see them. We want to see you out and about enjoying Colorado with your family. So send us an email at togetherforcolorado at cbs.com or post it on social media using the hashtag for Colorado and we'll be sure to share it right here on this show. Still to come on together it's a party fit for World Series winners but this champagne celebration is for a different kind of champion. We're going to introduce you to them coming up next. Coming up on this week's Together for Colorado calendar on Tuesday it's Independence Eve. The free concert and light show ends with a fireworks finale in Civic Center Park. On Wednesday, start your 4th of July with the Pancake Breakfast. Proceeds benefit the Gold Hill Fire Department in Boulder County. On Saturday, support the Dumb Friends League while enjoying some cold beer. The Catwalk Tales and Elves event will be at the Quebec Street Shelter. Find more information on these and other events on the Together for Colorado page at cbsdenver.com. A champagne celebration is a common scene in locker rooms following a big game. But this is a different kind of victory celebration. Instead of athletes, cancer survivors are taking part. Kelly Worthman and photojournalist Eric Bloomer introduce us to some people who have every reason to celebrate. It's a celebration fit for a champion. Like Northern Colorado's minor league hockey team that's won back-to-back -back titles. But this time, the bubbly is for champions like Nina Rentschler. Awesome! Her victory wasn't winning a big game in an arena, rather beating the odds by beating cancer. Now that I've gone through this, I feel like I can do anything. And Nina was diagnosed with breast cancer last October. She endured 20 weeks of chemotherapy at the UC Health Cancer Center in Fort Collins, a journey the 37-year-old mother never expected. You feel like you're drinking out of a fire hose. It's so overwhelming and emotional. On the day of her last treatment, Nina rang a bell at the hospital, symbolizing she was cancer-free. But UC Health and the Colorado Eagles wanted to take that victory celebration a step further for Nina and other cancer survivors. So with a cart full of sparkling cider, this is a moment to cherish. goggles and a championship trophy, a team of survivors celebrated a great win. <laughs> It's just a huge achievement that she made it through everything, so I'm really proud of her. Even if Colorado's teams don't always bring home a trophy, Nina is hopeful cancer-beating champions can be celebrated like this every year. Maybe we can start something because this is such a great way to honor just being a survivor. I love that joy. It's just contagious. Well, cancer has affected thousands of Coloradans, including Aurora's late mayor, Steve Hogan. Coming up next on Together, what the city is doing to make sure that his memory lives on.
Plus, a special camp for extraordinary kids, the football stars who are giving back to Coloradans with Down syndrome. Now an update on a story we brought you during our very first episode of Together. Ed McCaffrey's two sons made national headlines when they rushed to help a hiker who took a bad fall in Castle Rock. Well, this week, Max and Christian McCaffrey talked about that moment that they sprung into action to help 72-year-old Dan Smoker. They also praised the paramedics who helped save his life. To see them work and to see how well they approached the situation and they did everything perfectly and... I mean, he's, he's walking now, and that, to me, that's a miracle. It was a pretty traumatic experience for everyone involved in there, especially Eli, his grandson, who was hiking with him. And so we're, we're just fortunate that he's alive and well and you know, back on his feet moving. Christian plays for the Carolina Panthers and already invited the smokers to a game so they can all catch up. Well, that rescue isn't the only way the McCaffreys are coming together for Colorado. This week, they teamed up with Broncos players and cheerleaders to create a field of dreams for kids. It's part of the annual Dare to Play Game Day for children with Down syndrome. Michael Abeda shows us all the action on the field. Like most Coloradans, Jeff McGarrity and his son Jeffrey and daughter Cecilia are Broncos fans. We're Broncos fans, no question. Yeah, absolutely. They watch every Sunday. My son Jeffrey loves football. Cecilia loves cheerleading. But they never imagined they would be able to do those things. Jeffrey and Cecilia have Down syndrome, and finding similarly abled peers to put together a football team is challenging. But thanks to the Global Down Syndrome Foundation, Jeffrey, Cecilia, and 74 other kids were able to come out Saturday morning and have some fun. Jeffrey plays football. Cecilia McGarity! And his sister gets to be a cheerleader. And since this was their first time doing something like this, they had a little help learning how to be a part of the game. Run right on first. All right, ready? Yeah. Right. NFL players of today and yesterday coached the football players while Denver Broncos cheerleaders taught the young squad how to move. It's a neat experience to have the kids able to do it. It means a lot to the parents to see their kids succeed and have fun. And on a Saturday in June, it's hard to think of a better place to spend your morning. A great day like this, it's families coming together. It's cool to have all of everybody here. I love that. Well, the city of Aurora is coming together to honor its late mayor. This week, crews broke ground on a new parkway that will be named after Steve Hogan. Hogan lost his battle with cancer in May. The Stephen Hogan Parkway will connect the existing 6th Avenue Parkway to E-470. It'll provide a lasting memory for the mayor who dedicated his life to public service. Well, we hope you'll show us how people are coming together where you live. Post it on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram using the hashtag for Colorado. And I'll be sure to share it right here on the air. Well, thanks so much for joining us on Together. We hope you join us next week as we do a special show honoring the 4th of July. We are already looking forward to sharing some remarkable stories on our military and veterans. Until then, take a look at how people are beating the heat. Photojournalist Eric Bloomer shares the fun that's happening at Bear Creek Lake Park in Lakewood.